Hi guys and welcome to the PHP Debug Tracer. Uh, this is an application written in PHP and um, you need MySQL and you need a Linux server. It doesn't require any other applications installed apart from them. Um, basically this is a, an application where you can trace and debug your application live. So um, I'm going to give you some examples. So this is one example that I provide. Uh, to load the debug in your script you just need to include this statement at the beginning of your application and whenever you want the debugger to stop you just need to include this here now what that does is it tells the debugger to stop to wait and to analyze it now if you look at this script um, I'm, I don't know if you know PHP but if you don't know PHP this is a really good way to learn and see how things work so um, basically these are variables you're going to see that this is a variable these are um, an array and uh, here this actually includes a file. Now, if you actually check, I actually have these files in the server. So if you see, I've got example one, example two, example three, and include file. So what that does, that command does, is that when it runs, it's going to open that file. So if we open that file, which is here, you'll see that what it does is it assigns the hello variable world. So then here it stops the debugger. So let's go back to the, um, to the example. And then once we get back to the example, it assigns a start value one and it stops the debugger. Now, based on the value of the start value, depends where it goes. So we can either say hello or goodbye. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this script and you're gonna see how it works. So I have uh, a window open here and I'm going to run the script. Now it's going to be loading. You won't see, it'll just stay white. The reason why is because PHP doesn't complete until we finish the debug process. So I'm going to run it now. Now when we go back to the debugger and we reload the, um, the pending files, you'll see, look, example1.php ran at 857. So let's open that. And look, this is where the debugger stopped. This is actually live. So if I was to click on the variable name, you'll see the name equals Mr. Chip. So the array, you can click on an array and it's going to give you a breakdown of everything that's contained in that array. Or if you want, you can specifically click on a section of that array here, and it's going to show you exactly what that is. Now, what you can do is you can step next. Now, basically what that means is step to the next breakpoint. So in this case, it's gone to the include file, and here's the breakpoint. So if we click on the variable hello, hello equals world. So let's go next. Uh, it goes back to the example you're going to see, look, it jumped back down to here. So we equal start value equals one. So look, one of the things we can do is we can actually change that variable. We can actually put start value equals zero. So let's set that variable. Now look, now start variable equals zero. So now, originally it would have gone echo hello. Now it's going to go echo goodbye. So let's step next to see what happens. Look, it went to echo goodbye. So we click step next and the application finishes. See, the current debug script has terminated or completed and is no longer running. Now let's see what happens on this script. Let me move this to your side. Yep. Goodbye, Mr. Chip. So the reason why it did that, if we look back at the code, is because we put that the start value equals zero. So instead of going to um, hello, he went to goodbye instead. And then you see the echo name at the end. Now we're going to look at um, loops and break on variables. So what a break on variable does, which is this option here, is it actually only stops if a variable equals that value. So in this case, um, I'm going to give you an example. This is example two, uh, and you'll see it here. So um, here is the original debugger uh, that you load at the beginning. Uh, by the way, the debugger only kicks in if your IP address and the debugger is enabled. So any user can go to this page, they won't load that debugger unless they match your IP address and it's enabled. So if we see here, now what this does is, this is a loop that loops 10 times. So it goes like this, okay? And then at the end, it'll say echo end of loop, and then it'll stop in the debugger. Now, it's interesting because the application is running, you think that um, it would actually display 
echo and loop while it's still waiting here. That's not that's not correct because PHP doesn't display its output until the whole script is completed. So that's what, why when you're debugging, you might see, well, where's the output? Well, the output doesn't get displayed until the very end. So let's load this script and uh, let's see how it loads in the debugger. So we're going to load example two. Again, a white page. Let's go to the console. Let's reload. Here's example two, run at 9.05. So let's click on example two. And we'll see we're here. We're inside the, the loop. So let's click I i equals zero. Something interesting is that the variables you click on come on the left hand side so you can click here makes it easy. So we click step next you'll see it goes through the loop. So now we should be on one. We go one so you see. Now obviously if you've got a big loop this can become irritating so what we'll do is we'll do break on variable and i equals nine. So let's go set break on and look, i equals 9. So now when we click here, it's 9. So when we click step next, it's gone to the end of the loop. Now we click end, the current script is stopped um, debugging. So basically what that means is, uh, and let me show you the, the output, is that you don't have to wait until a um, you go through every step. If you specify what variable you want and you put the breakpoint just after that, then you can stop the execution. Okay guys, I'm going to show you um, how you can get variables that aren't necessarily written in your script. Things for, like, for example like post or gets or any other variables that you want to get that are in the global uh, scope. Now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an example. So let's look at this one. Now if you look here, this uh, is the variable hello equals test. So that's a get variable. So let's run that, and then let's go to the debugger. Now, reload. Here we go. Now let's go to modify variable. Let's put get. But in this case, instead of doing set variable, let's do get variable. So there we are. Hello equals test. Now you can do this for anything you want. Um, let's do post. Now there won't be anything here. As you'll see, post doesn't contain anything because we haven't sent anything via post. Uh, you can specify things exactly, so we can put name. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't name, it was hello. So let's do so hello equals test. So as you can see there, you can actually specify any variable you want as long as it exists. You know, in this case, there was no variable uh, get with name, so it said undefined variable. Um, another option you can do uh, is if you want to terminate the script, you can either kill all scripts that are pending, or you can kill the script exactly, uh, or you can actually click on the time instead of the file. If you click on the file, it loads the PHP script in the debugger, or if you click here, it says, are you sure you want to stop the debug script? So click OK. The current debug script has terminated completely and is no longer running. So if we look here, debugger stopped this application at this time. So um, the only thing now really is uh, to talk about the limitations. So the limitations of this um, application is really, um, it only really runs in Linux because I've only tried in Linux, but that isn't really a problem because most PHP applications run in Linux. For example, the server I'm running on now is a GoDaddy hosting service, which is $6 a month. Um, and also, um, the arrays can't be longer than seven. The reason for that is because if you want it longer than that, it has to be programmed in. I can do that, that's no problem. And I chose seven because I didn't really see that anyone would have a bigger requirement of seven layers. But if you need me to do that, that's no problem. Just let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to help you with that. Um, as you can see here, let me just rerun the script so I can give you an example. As you can see here, it, it's 7 uh, and it displays the value. If it was to go above 7, so if it would have an extra bracket, then it wouldn't, it wouldn't display the value. Um, the, other thing is, um, the other thing is that sessions are destroyed every time a script is run. The reason for this is because PHP puts each script in a queue based on the session. So if you were to load one script and then try to load another one, like the debugger for example, the sessions would match and it wouldn't let you load until the, the, the script that you were debugging had completed. 
Now, I realize some applications do need sessions, but there's no problem. You can just run the debugger and then assign the session with the modified variables here. So you can assign sessions with that if you want. And um, the other um, thing that you have to be aware of is that if the debugger is in a function or a class, you just need to specify the variables that you want to be global. And um, that's run about it. Um, you're only based on how long the script can run on your server. For me, it's five minutes on my hosting provider, but normally it's one or two minutes. So that's it. If anyone has any questions, please let me know um, and I'd be happy to help. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you.